Greetings ladies and gentlemen. For those who have been following along with my channel activities with the videos I've liked, you may have noticed the continuing interest I've been having within a certain eastern subculture. A subculture that takes an epic precedence for the sheer volume of quality fan-made content in terms of its art, music, games, and videos, including its own anime. A subculture which takes the cake for the intense hand-eye coordination required to beat the original bullet hell shooter games created by Zun since 1996 from when this whole reality first spawned. Yep, it's no surprise from the title of this video that I am indeed referring to Toho. But what may be surprising is the second part of said video title, namely the science part. Really? You might ponder? How could that be from what was just shown in the previous minute of this video? Flying heroines, a mass array of lit projectiles? How? Well, this is the part where I mentioned that I got incredibly bored while browsing the YouTube videos and comments one day, and in fact decided to attempt to rationally explain what potential sciences could be at work in Toho. This led to lengthy YouTube comment chains, which then led to a 3000 plus word paper over months of refinement, which then led me to presenting my findings at a convention for 2014, namely AFCON. Yep, the snowball effect, folks. I guess getting bored while trying to obtain a degree in nanoscience and materials at university can get you places. The paper is, of course, linked below for your viewer consumption, which is much better read than if I went on to try to recount every single detail from the paper in this video. But as a general summary for what the paper proposes, it basically uses theoretical and applied physics, along with some evolutionary biology, to help explain the various aspects of Toho, such as Superman-like flight, the formation and firing of Danmaku, Sakura's time dilation ability, the physiology of Flandre, and the locale of Gensokyo, the region sectioned off on Earth where Toho largely takes place. For any questions that may arise from the paper, I'll be happy to answer in the comments below. It should be said that, even after 3000 words, this is still all theoretical. Like with anything else subject to the scientific method, all of the content within can be subject to change in the future, so I do encourage you, the viewer, to take the paper with a pinch of salt. In other words, disclaimer! Moving along, even with the paper in play, there are still a lot of things that I've not gone to the trouble of writing out that I've brainstormed at one point or another about the many other aspects within the diverse world of Toho. I find it curious about how one of the major characters within Toho, Yukari Yakumo, has an extremely well-versed understanding in mathematics that is said to be used in improving the abilities of her assistant, or Shikigami, Ran Yakumo. I find it also curious about how within Gensokyo there is an aquatic-based engineer, Natori Karashiro, with her keen passion for tinkering and inventing, and a doll maker, Alice Margatroyd, with her artificially sentient doll creations. And personally, what I find the most intriguing within the Toho reality is to do with the involvement of Renko Izumi and Maribel Hearn, university-based students majoring in physics and psychology respectively as they in fact also go about trying to rationalise the realm of Gensokuro. Yeah, I swear I'm not trying to be a double ganger of Renko here. I mean, sure, we both wear hats, study physics at a university, and have invested interest in Gensokuro, but... This isn't helping, is it? Anyway, uh, the point I'm trying to make is about the overall impression one could take of Toho, in that it isn't necessarily all black and white with regards to what could be considered magical, or what could be considered scientifically rational. Depending on how you look at it, you might find different aspects of Toho that are very blurred between these two traits, based on one's own subjective understanding of the world. As an analogy, like Evangelion. This is pretty much one of the reasons why Toho has such a big fan base in the first place, given how open everything is to interpretation. Personally, I think in Envisioning Toho, there's one quote from Arthur C. Clarke that I believe can appropriately embody the spirit of the Toho reality. A quote that, if recalled throughout one's journey in Gensokyo, could spark a lot in the way of a vibrant imagination. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video, and I'll see you around.